is Bitcoin is arguably the first instance of that. It's uh, a system, which of course you are aware of, uh, which incentivizes people to do some specific piece of work, namely mining, in exchange for receiving some payment from the system. Now, it doesn't need any of those people to know or trust one another, uh, but it still does require there to be outside, um, outside entities who are actually building and managing that network. Augur is another example, decentralized prediction markets. Anybody know Augur? No? Okay, one. So it's a decentralized prediction market. It incentivizes people to uh, create markets about things that they want to know what's going to happen in the future, to uh, place bets, to, to sort of wager on either side of a decision, and then it incentivizes a network of reporters to say what happened in the future. Um, so, so when that thing has happened. And the whole system is, is created such that it's game theoretically secure so that nobody can game it. And that's really one of the sort of key ideas around the day. So recently we started to see governance DAOs, uh, which are sort of the next step. Um, these are kind of self-managing, actually. They're, they're not like... Um, uh, one of these special purpose DAOs like Bitcoin or Augur, where what it's doing is defined up front, but rather they've kind of got a loose idea of what it is that they're going to do, and then essentially acts like a sophisticated vehicle or investment fund uh, that enables them to do that. So Slockit, if anybody's aware of that, have recently announced their DAO. Um, and that will allow people to, to finance this DAO and then to make decisions about proposals they get offered to it to sort of uh, deliver its um, business objectives. Um, now, it can't, really, it can't really act as a company, as I say, it's like, a, like an investment vehicle more than anything. Sorry, but can you speak into the mic? Yeah, yeah, sure, sorry. Um, acts more like an investment vehicle than anything and um, the decision weight that people have in deciding whether they want to accept proposals that are presented to it or not is based on how much of the DAO that they own. And that ownership is determined by how much ether they've sent to the DAO in the first place in order to, to receive ownership of it. Uh, so also part of the proposal that gets offered to them is usually around what kind of revenue stream they can expect to receive as a consequence of, of having provided that uh, service provider with funding. The next step is what we're doing, which is uh, a true DAO. So if you can think of a governance DAO as being roughly an investment vehicle, uh, so like a, an investment syndicate, um, a true DAO is more like a company or a non-profit. Um, so it allows people to build companies or non-profits online with people from all over the world without needing to trust any of those people. Um, so it provides a structure and process uh, for that kind of trustless collaboration and allows people to earn ownership within that organization in exchange for work that they've done. So it's like real proof of work rather than just sort of mining. Um, and, and because, you know, a hierarchy as we traditionally understand it is not really going to work with um, a load of people who actually are just Ethereum addresses all over the world. You don't really know whether those are people, other DAOs, bots, a fridge. You can't tell. Um, you, can't really have, um, you can't really have a formal hierarchy. So in such a system, the hierarchy, the influence that participants have needs to be emergent. So what does a true DAO do? So it does everything that a governance DAO, you've got that, that's safe. Um, but it also allows that whole management layer, except of cross management out because it's self-management, it's self-organizing. Um, because when the rules of an organization are sort of baked into code, you don't need to have the informal rules, that, or so many at least of the informal rules that we currently have around company bylaws and the rules of the, of the, the laws of the land that we abide by. So it allows simply task creation, coordination of work, quality control, uh, the remuneration of people for doing the various different kinds of work, and resolution of disputes. So I mentioned that there's no need for hierarchy, and that's because the hierarchy is an emergent quality of the system. 
people by virtue of the things that they do and the way other people perceive what they've done uh, earn greater influence as a consequence of the merit that they've demonstrated you know how skilled they are and and the trust that they've demonstrated how often they actually deliver on what they promised to do how often they haven't tried to screw anybody else over um, and also allows for complex decision making so it's not just yes or no decisions it's rather things like range voting, liquid democracy, various different kinds of delegation that would be necessary within an organisation. So, practically, how this is structured from our perspective is that what we're building with Colony is split into two components. It's a network, which is basically a bunch of smart contracts distributed on the Ethereum network, uh, which is open source, and which allows developers to build different kinds of DAOs, any kind of DAO actually, or any kind of application which may benefit from decentralized or distributed uh, governance and, and, and management. So for example, Bitcoin, uh, rather than having its decision making centralized <coughs> or within the people who are sort of currently having these arguments, this can actually be distributed between all of the people who are participating. Um, and so yet that comes in the form of a modular toolkit of smart contracts that anybody can build whatever they like. We are additionally building a client so that it provides a sort of DAO in a box, a generic, uh, simple to use um, application, which will be familiar to anybody who uses things like Asana or Trello or Pivotal Tracker or any of those kind of applications. Um, and, and our goal is that it will be as easy to start a DAO as it is to start a Facebook group or a meetup group or something like, like that. Um, that will be free for public colonies to use, things that really want to be open and on the public blockchain. People just have to pay their own gas costs, but that applies anyway. Um, and we'll also be offering a paid service via our uh, private chains for companies who sort of value privacy over not needing to trust us. Here's a quick view of what the client is currently looking like. I warn you this is strictly work in progress um, and absolutely not live at the moment. Um, down the left hand side you can see all of the colonies that this person is in uh, and the amount of uh, ownership that they have in each one. Um, their ether balance, the people who are in the um, the people who are in that colony with them all appear to be the same person at the moment. Um, and then the various different uh, components that they have to to participate in that. So the documents files that have been created, um, the ability to trade their tokens, um, and various boards which are very much, well they're just Kanban boards essentially. Um, within the application, within, the, within each board you can um, set the title and description, uh, the deadline that can be recurring, um, things that need to recur, need to be done on a weekly, monthly, daily, whatever basis, the budget for doing those things. Um, and, and various other options around that. Um, so, the whole the network that I mentioned before will be managed by the roots colony. Of course, the network itself has to be a DAO, and that will own and manage the network, and will be distributing the ownership of the root DAO at the end of the year, or yeah, somewhere around the beginning of Q4 probably. Um, that will additionally provide services to the DAO, particularly around uh, maintenance of it, uh, implementing new features uh, that have been agreed upon by the DAO, uh, moderation and arbitration of disputes. Um, and that root colony will collect, bank will collect fees on all the bounties that have been paid out to people for doing work in the various colonies. So our roadmap to getting to there <coughs> is this isn't much of a roadmap or warrant, given that it's two pieces. But it was very early this morning when I finished this, so cut me some slack. <laughs> um, we, start, we start off with a very much more centralized kind of offering, which is principally targeted towards um, existing companies and agencies who want to be able to manage a distributed workforce. Um, the reason for that is twofold. One is because it's the easiest bit to break off to begin with. Um, and two is because it provides a sort of strategic foothold for us to take going forwards whereby we're able to actually seed the network with people who by virtue of being freelancer are already comfortable working on their own and working remotely 
um, and also people who are already trusted by the people that they work for. So we're hoping that that results in a sort of curated talent pool that as the system opens up and people are able to network together, will be very good for the system. Um, so trusted, centralized, private, all running on private chains initially. Uh, project based, so people aren't sharing the ownership to begin with, they're sharing the, the, the uh, bounties of particular projects. Um, it will allow for being paid in Ether and it will allow for being paid in um, Fiat ultimately as well. In the future, hopefully about 12 months from now, um, it will enable the kinds of completely free, completely open, trustless, decentralized participation that I've uh, I promised. <coughs> So, of course, this is a bitch. Uh, how do we overcome some of the, the really serious challenges which face people trying to do these kind of things today? So, um, securities regulation and the SEC are sort of the 800 pound gorilla. They're no doubt gonna start throwing their weight around pretty soon um, because basically DAOs need to be extremely careful that they aren't issuing uh, unregulated securities and some of the projects that are existing now uh, are really really treading a very fine line and <laughs> they, uh, they could really be jeopardizing um, the whole space if they sort of don't pay very close attention um, so the other side of things are uh, the the legal status of DAOs because at the moment there's no real sort of legal structure that would that would encompass a DAO. I don't know if anybody's ever read Mike Moyer's Slicing Pie or is familiar with um, holacracy and whatnot. But there's no real structure from a legal perspective that allows for you to have that kind of dynamic equity allocation within an organization. And although there are people working on that, at the moment it wouldn't fit a DAO. So, um, it would mean that anybody found to be participating in a DAO that had got some kind of liability somewhere was in fact participant in uh, um, uh, like a, an unincorporated association. And on that basis, would be jointly and severally liable with everybody else who participates, irrespective of whether they know what they've done or what they've done. And that's a very bad thing. <laughs> so. We really need to find some kind of structure that will allow for that. But that's actually a, a, certainly a non-trivial problem because, as I mentioned before, you, you, you can't know who is participating in a DAO because all it is is an Ether address. So KYC is going to be really, really hard. Um, and then, of course, we've got interacting with the real world. So legacy organizations who've got really no interest in, in understanding why there's value in Ether, why there's value in the tokens that these DAOs are distributing. So that's also going to be an interesting problem to solve. And people like Slocket have proposed um, the use of service providers who essentially act as intermediaries or fiduciaries which sit between this DAO that they buy into and, and the real world and are able to inter interact with those guys. So. This is our content details. You can hit us up on the website. You can join our Slack community if you want to learn more. Um, or you can email us. Uh, uh, hello at Colony. And uh, yeah, I think we've still got some time, have we? Um, A little bit? No. Nope. no? Okay. <laughs> well, you can't have any questions, but that works for me. <laughs>